What's up everybody? Welcome to Bakumoto. Today we continue with the disassembly of the engine. Okay, so this is where the engine's at right now. Um, picking up where we left off from last time, we were able to pretty much fully disassemble this side. So, uh, you can see that. And on this side, we ended up needing a special puller tool to pull out the flywheel. I also noticed that I forgot to take out the starter right here. So we're gonna take that out today. Uh, so let's try to get this guy off, the starter off, and then we will pick something else to work on. Okay, so the flywheel um, requires a puller bolt to be able to take it out. And this is essentially a set that I bought off Amazon. That comes with all the different sizes and uh, whatnot. The bolt pattern that I needed is a 22 uh, by one and a half. Yep, that fits in there. So essentially the idea is that when this screws in, the depth in here that we see between this metal piece in the back and this thread is shorter than this distance. So if I keep screwing this in, it should eventually start pushing on that. Now the tricky bit is gonna be, once this tightens in and hits the other side, so this point, if I crank it more, it cranks the whole engine. So we're gonna try two things. One is gonna be using an impact driver to try to twist this off. If the impact driver just keeps spinning the engine, then we're gonna to have to figure out a way to lock the uh, drive shaft on this side. Might need to put back on some of the gears just so I can lock them in place. Uh, but uh, let's try that. Okay, so with the uh, impact uh, drill. I was actually able to pull it out. So there we go. That should come right out. There's magnets holding it in. Okay, so that's out. Sure, that's to take this out now. It's just these four bolts. And then we can finally take off the, um, what is that, the pulse? No, oh, that's not the pulse, that's the charging cable that goes to the regular rectifier. Okay, so let's uh, undo that and take this off. The flywheel and alternator are off and I made the mistake of dropping the alternator back into the flywheel which <laughs> magnetically clenched it in there. So if I want to remount these things back in the engine, yeah, I'll need to. <laughs> struggle a bit to get to do it and get the, the separated. Either way, that's it for now. Um, now let's remove this guy from here, the starter, which by the looks of it actually uses Phillips heads, bolts to hold it in place. A little bizarre, but okay, we can do that. Okay, the starter motor is off. Turns out it was just held by two bolts which ended up being these ones here and I had to remove the oil filter in order to uh, give it enough clearance to pull out and now we have this big hole in the crankcase so now that that's out uh, let's remove perhaps some of this stuff here before jumping into the front cylinder to lighten the load on this side okay all the bits and pieces that were here are now off. Now we have the gearbox freely spinning. We have the oil pump also freely spinning. The uh, shaft that was in here that went out all the way to the other side, which was actually the uh, gear lever, that's off as well. Uh, and the way that mechanism worked, there was a big arm that went like this and was essentially tripping this guy at the top to get him to, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that action to 
should get it to slide around and move in there. And those components are right here. So there's that shaft that went to the other side to essentially the gear lever. And then this funky thing inside was actually what was driving the uh, clicking on the inside. Okay, so that's sorted out. And I think that pretty much wraps up all the peripheral components. On this side, there's nothing like, I mean, I can remove this little bracket here and perhaps unscrew this, but uh, we can probably hold on to that for now. Um, on the other side, pretty much took off everything there is to take off as well. So we're ready to start digging into the front two cylinders. So let's take the lid off, uh, which is held by four Allen uh, bolts and uh, see what's inside. And this is what we have on the top side, which is a familiar sight because we've adjusted the uh, valves um, on the other cylinder on the cafe racer uh, in the past. So this looks very familiar. It's just oriented forward. The valves are here, 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 here. Each cylinder has a essentially two uh, or four, sorry, uh, two intake, two uh, exhaust valves. Um, so yeah, now uh, we gotta start disassembling things. And to do so, uh, let's take off the this cover here by taking off these two, these two, these two, and these two. That should allow us to remove the oil lines on the top and the chain guard. Um, and then we'll start looking at what else can we loosen up and start taking off. I believe that should free up each of the sides. So we could uh, start dissembling a little by little. The problem here now becomes a matter of space. I'm kind of running out of it. Uh, so. I might just spend some time cleaning all these parts and boxing them up or packaging them into separate Ziploc bags, just so you know I know I know what's what, and I'm not losing it. And uh, then we can uh, focus on this guy. Um, as for how it looks, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm curious to get to the actual. Uh, cylinders and the pistons in here and in here and see what condition those are in. Uh, based on the way the exhaust looked, uh, there's probably going to be some issues that we see with these guys up here. Um, so lots of interesting content coming up. So let's take off the guards up here. All right, the little chain guard and the uh, oil lines are off. Um, they came out like this, so these are the oil lines, the guard, the four bolts that kept the oil lines in place, and the four bolts that kept everything together. So these, I'm pretty sure they go, you know, quite deep um, in there, and are essentially stressed members of the whole engine. So important for keeping the whole thing together. Okay, so now we have the kind of four quadrants of um, items that we can deal with. Uh, so let's start by taking off this particular one here, which would be the uh, intake um, valve covers. Uh, or no, yeah, an intake valve covers on cylinder, what is that? One, two, three, four. Um, so, yeah, that's just a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter again. And this cover, I believe, should be able to come off. And then we will be able to see the camshaft. Um, and then once we undo this side and part of this whole chain assembly, uh, I think that's the only when we're gonna actually be able to take it off. But either way, let's take these two off and see what we find under. All right, and as expected, the camshaft is visible under. Um, 
I'm curious to see how the camshafts are going to look like on the back uh, two cylinders because um, these the engines are known for um, these pieces right here where the the big lobes are uh, essentially due to the manufacturing process back in the 80s they weren't very pure so they'll develop like little impurities like little oh you can actually kind of see this one even it has little grooves in it which slowly start to eat away at things and completely mess up your timing um, but uh, yeah okay so that's off let's do these three as well uh, in terms of how they were assembled the 12 millimeter was again a big bolt that went in quite far probably holding yeah, the entire head in place and the small bolt kind of just stayed here and this is what the cover looks like uh, pretty straightforward just some oil passages for oil to nicely lubricate things and just keeping the camshaft in place so yeah let's take off the other four and uh see. and here they are all four uh cam covers are off and uh i can already tell that the head is getting loose because it's already started to leak oil right from this area so pretty sure if i undid these two and these two the entire thing will just come loose but before we do that we should probably remove these camshafts and the uh, uh, chain tensioner so the next on the list is these four bolts right here and that should loosen this guy which should allow us to move the chain tensioner in some sort of fashion to allow us to release the tension on the chain at which point we can then remove the camshafts all right one of the camshafts is out once i loosened these i was able to pull this up and there was a little pin here that was essentially attached to the tensioner once i removed that the tensioner was able to release enough so that i can just pretty much pull the <laughs> camshaft exactly like that so there we go, the two camshafts on this side are out. Now here's the other one here. And uh, yeah, so like I was saying, these have some scuffing marks on them, on the lobes, as you can see on that one. Um, this side, yep, same thing on this side, on this guy. Um, yep, there's scratches on it here too, and this one's probably the best looking one. But either way, so that's what the camshafts look like on the uh, backside uh, cylinder. Or in the, the cylinders two and four. Okay, so that's out. This guy should be able to come out as well. Well, this is attached in some other form. Nope, it's coming out. Okay, so that should allow me to pull this out. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, then just these two and these two should loosen up the cylinder head completely. I don't think I need to remove the um, valve covers. Uh, the, the actual valve springs and the valves themselves. So let's try that. All right, after undoing the four bolts, as I predicted, that pretty much loosened up everything. So when I banged on it with the rubber mallet to kind of loosen it up, once the gap opened up on the bottom, a whole bunch of more <laughs> uh, coolant liquid just poured out. Um, and I'm expecting to see some oil as well because, I mean, there's some pretty good oil deposits in there. But uh, either way, uh, let's remove the cylinder cover. Uh, this, uh, or the cylinder head, I don't know what, what you want to call this. Uh, let's get it off. Okay, cylinder head is off. And here's our pistons. Uh, quite a bit of carbon buildup, I guess. Um, this one's got a lot of rustiness in there. I mean, that could be because water got into it. 
over the last few uh, months. Um, yeah, as for the actual tops, that's what they're kind of looking like. And then, yeah, there's a little carbon buildup on there as well. Uh, the gasket actually seemed okay, and it was pretty much the one thing that was keeping everything together very firmly. So that did its job, definitely didn't leak. Um, the, yeah, the cylinders, cylinder heads and the valves. Yeah, this, this one's got more uh, carbon buildup on it, and this one's got more rust, and there's oil here too, so. Huh. Either way, that's what it is. Um, okay, so this side is pretty much done. All right, guys, we've got the uh, front side cylinder heads off. We got the camshaft, all the little bits and pieces of the top part of the engine for the front completely off. So a good progress this time. Next time we're going to focus on the back two cylinders and I expect to see some real problems there. Um, so make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications when new videos become available. Check me out on Instagram at balconmoto 2018 and make sure to check out um, uh, balconmoto.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.